So, as promised, here we go. It's our, it's our first one of the year. Yes, well, let's indeed. Let's ask the umpire, John. How are you keeping, first I'm, of all? I'm looking, very well, thank you. You're looking fit and strong. Thank you. Good man. I hope you're ready for this. I am. It's always a highlight, you know. It's always a highlight of, of, <laughs> of the summer doing our Ask the Umpires. <laughs> um, because people are... It's amazing how far back, going through the sheaths of th emails that we have, how far back people go. There's this sort of resentment about something that happened 35 years ago <laughs> in a friendly Sunday match in some village game somewhere. Was I out or not? You know, it sort of still burns away. So yeah, yeah. it's great fun. And, and as usual, there's, our, I think, our collection of, of actually things that did happen uh, and ones that, um, that possibly didn't but could have done. So not too many dead balls, thank you. <laughs> Victor, as always, uh, is, is my, my, my lovely assistant. <laughs> Your Debbie McGee. Amorous, yeah. amorous, <laughs> amorous assistant. <laughs> well, I think he's, he always used to say. So why don't you kick off? Victor? Well, I will kick off with when we relate to this Ashes series. Mm -hmm. uh, we talked about briefly before I had that Mitchell Stark catch. We'll get yeah. on to that in a second. OK. Um, this is from Stuart Ward. A few years ago, I was fielding at Cow Corner, and our visiting Aussie was fielding long on. The ball got hit out to him on the boundary, and in Aussie fashion, he caught the ball with his reverse hands mm -hmm. in front of his face. Perfectly secure, but in the same motion, he brought his hands down and dropped the ball to the floor as we all went to celebrate the catch. The ball hit the floor, rolled over the boundary, which the umpire said was now, it was a four. Although we obviously thought he was in control, we accepted the decision, ended up going on to tie the match. So was it a four or was it out, is the question. And it's, we're in the same sort of territory as that Mitchell Stark catch or dismissal uh, of who Lord. was at, at uh, Lord's. Uh, well, Mitchell, Mitchell Stark's catch. Well, let's talk about that one then. Was a fact. Mitchell, the, the law says not, not only has the catcher got to catch the ball, we control the ball having caught it. Yeah. But he or she must be able, must also control his or her further movement. So, so having caught the ball, you should be able to move to the right, to the left, wherever you want to move. The problem with Stark is that the only position, the only direction he could move was to fall. He had no control over it. And, and then in falling, if, if in falling, He'd, he'd actually kept, kept, kept hold of the ball, but he grounded it. So it's not out. So Berea's Erasmus on that time got it Absolutely exactly right. Spot, spot on. And it sounds, judging from Stewart's question, that the umpire was probably right to it's say really hard, that it's not a catch. Catch, isn't it? It is what, more what, difficult. What the umpire had to say to himself was, did he have control of the ball and throw it on the ground? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And obviously, it's a matter of the umpire's opinion. Yeah. And in, in his opinion, based on what he saw, he thought it was not the ball was still alive. And I suppose, if you're going back to that Mitchell Stark catch, is that if he was aware of the law and he was in control, he wouldn't have taken the risk of sliding That's along right. like That's he right. did. Yeah. Right. And he'd have put his hand under the ball. Yeah. That's right. If he'd put his hand under the ball, he'd have been all right, but the ball was on the ground. Um, from yeah. what I saw... Yeah. It was clearly a case of not out. There was an interesting one involving Joe Root in the next game, mm. who dropped a couple. Mm. He took a catch at slip, and immediately, out of, out of, out of frustration at the ones oh, he had dropped, right. he hurled it to the ground. Well, that's different. He's got control of the ball, and he was able to throw it where he wanted yep. to. So that was out. And there was no yeah. problem. There was no problem with that's his right. his movement. His movement was fine. He was in the con under co it was under control. Yeah. And he had and the it, ball controlled enough to throw yes, it. To yeah. the ground. he threw it to the ground because he dropped the ball before. Exactly. exactly. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Okay. Well, that that's that's good clarification. Thank yeah. you. It's a good start. I'd yes. say. So it, it is to do with your own movements yourself Absolutely. as the fielder. You've got to be able to move in any direction you so desire, and the umpires have got to. That's how the umpires see it. So I hope that helps, Stuart. It does. Now, here's one from Richard Carrington, and, and this happened um, to us just before Christmas, Victor, in Pakistan. Right, yeah. And, and he relays it perfectly, very tense final hour, the last day of the first test played in Pakistan. Uh, Jack Leach finally got that final wicket. The point was here. The sun was already going down. It was a, it was a, it was a fantastic scene, actually. Uh, it really was. I remember it so well. The sun started to set. Pakistan running out of batsmen. When Muhammad Ali, the quick bowler, splendid name, 
He was one of the two final Pakistan batsmen at the crease. He suddenly left the field for several minutes. We assumed it was a, a bathroom break. <laughs> but as the minutes ticked by, and this is it actually this, this did yeah, happen. Yeah, yeah. As the minutes ticked away, the sun the sun went down. It was going to be bad light stop play. It was so tense as to what was going to happen first. Were England take the final wicket, or would it be too dark and the umpires would mm -hmm. take them off? The England players are waiting, hands on hips. We in the commentary box saying, "Where is he? <laughs> he just vanished. He just he just went off and left." Mm. Uh, so inevitably, and I did uh, we, we did think about this at the time. We looked to ask you, how long? Could our old friend Muhammad be in the gents before well, yeah, before yeah. you had to go and get him out, or can you time somebody out when he's already in? I mean, what 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 would have been the scenario there if he had locked himself away and didn't come out? No, no, you've got me really some. <laughs> well, there's, no, there's nothing in the laws of cricket. No, so, I mean you. The ump, if he did, this, I mean, all the umpires could do, um, really, if in the final analysis, if he didn't come back. Was was to say that innings is is complete forfeited, but it's not it's not com it's not no. in the laws of cricket. No. There's nothing in the laws of cricket for that scenario. No, I mean the the umpires will have to go to to the dressing room to see where he was, <laughs> but if by then the sun, the sun has gone, gone down, and it's become dangerous. So it's all too late. It, you, absolutely, you you can't you can't play start the game. When people can't see the ball, flush him out. I say, John. <laughs> so, you've, have you had a scenario where you were umpiring and the batsman said, "Look, I'm terribly sorry, John. I just got to go got to, to the go. loo. I got to well, rush I've, off." I've had that. Yeah, yeah. I've had that. Yeah. And you would yeah. obviously, as a humane sort of person, yeah. say, "Well, off you go, but well, quick as you can." <laughs> you, you don't. You don't want the result <laughs> no. that happening on the pitch. <laughs> no. Okay. But this did happen. Yeah. And it took some time yeah, yeah. for him to come back. And there was a lot of unease around what was mm. going on. Because mm. the sun, it was, you know, hey, that part of the world, it drops like a stone, doesn't yeah. it? The well, the, if you remember, the, the, there was a pa the test match in Pakistan before, like a few years back, when... Um, Made in the dark. Moin Khan. Yes. The, the, the Pakistan keeper was that because they were struggling and England were winning the match. And he was walking from behind the wicket, yeah. slowly, to Wakar Yunus that were at yeah. the other end. Deliberate to waste Steve time. Steve Buckner dealt with that. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So but this actually is a scenario that needs not, to be looked at because if absolutely. it's nine wickets down, the sun going down, someone goes rushing off and doesn't come back. It needs to be. It needs to be. Right. Um, that's sorry, going on, on a. That's going on a special file. Yeah. Okay. This one is again something that relates to this series in particular. You know, there's been a lot of bouncers ball, hmm. and we've seen Alex Carey sometimes. Unusually, he's standing on the leg side, mm. say to a left-handed batsman, mm -hmm. because he knows the bowler's going to bowl at leg stump or just outside, so he's looking for that leg side. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it also says you can only have two men behind square on the leg side yep. in, in the laws of yep. post body line. So what I want to clarify is: it is it okay for the wicketkeeper to stand outside leg stump as the bowler runs into bowl? And still have two men behind square on the leg side. Yeah, but he must stand. He must stand behind the pitch. Okay. The pitch is ten feet wide, and if he goes outside that ten foot, he becomes he's not, a stand, he's not standing behind the wicket. But he, but he's quite entitled to stand outside leg stump. You'll say he can stand outside the leg stump. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But you've got to stand to be to be deemed a wicket keeper. You must be standing behind the pitch, okay. behind the stumps, but be in in line with the width of the pitch. Okay. Uh, but on that subject. All the tailenders now are getting bounced, ball after ball after ball, and seemingly the umpires don't seem to intervene. But when you were playing, there would have been the odd moment, perhaps, where a tailender in particular is getting bounced. And have you had to well, intervene, John? Well, well, we we actually, I actually had the the um, a, a game at Lords between Middlesex and Durham. When Tuffers <laughs> was being bounced by a chap, Andy Simington, Simington had lost his rag because Tuffers was hanging around. Right. So he, he bowled back Tuffers two bounces in succession. So I said, that's the first one, that's the second one, that's, that's it for the over. But the next ball, he ran up and bowled another bouncer to oh. Tuffers, which I know bowled, and gave him a first warning for, for dangerous and unfair bowling. And the, the Durham captain, John Lewis, wasn't very happy with me because... <laughs> but that's what the law yeah, says. Yeah. He, he, and, 
you would have taken into account Tuffus's Tuffus ability lack, with the Tuffus's bat. Tuffus's lack of ability with the bat. <laughs> it used to be, though, didn't it? Yeah. I mean, now number 11s now just get absolutely pe peppered with the, it. The, the, uh, in actual fact, the law says that the umpire has got to re take into consideration the batsman's ability to handle that sort of bowling. Yes. So if there's a danger and you don't want someone getting injured, which is which is very, very likely. Yeah. So the umpires really should be, if you're getting somebody constantly bowling at the batsman's rib, rib cage and he's struggling, the umpires can step in. The only thing these days... They don't. If, well, you've got, you've got helmets, you've got chest guards, you've got arm guards, you've got virtually every part of your body is, is protected. I mean, you get, we get, uh, uh, Travis Head got hit really hard on the helmet yesterday. Mm. Stood up. I mean, he seems to be okay. I mean, there, there seems to be less, less reason for a number eleven not to be able to or, or to avoid physical. You say that no, John. You wouldn't say that <laughs> if you were still playing. Well, I wouldn't. And actually, Dicky Bird rescued me once by saying, "Stop, stop!" To whichever West Indian fast bowler it was. So they think this man is incapable of defending himself. Yeah. It was great. So yeah. I said, "Thank yeah. you, Dicky." Yeah, that's that's um, what the law says. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, OK. Now, um, Trevor Warner, uh, you'll be chuckling at this. This is actually, this also goes back to Lords. OK. To the incident. Mm. Uh, <laughs> Trevor Warner from, uh, from Wales. He says, go on, have a go at saying where I live. OK. Chlander... Uh, Chlander... Thuin? Yeah, OK. Maybe. Oh, I've got, I've got, we've got a Welsh engineer who's shaking his head. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait, God, oh, wait, tell me what it is in my headphones. Can you say it? I've got to get it right in a minute. But... Uh, I can't, I can't spell it. He's saying spell it. <laughs> we'll get there. Anyway, Trevor knows where he's from, from Wales. Um, now, could you please ask John Holder whether he considers that the verdict should have been run out rather than crediting the bowler with a rather dubious wicket, as in stumped? Because he was given out stumped, wasn't he? Correctly. Right, so can you explain the difference between why he was, why he was stumped and why he wasn't run out. You can only be run out if you're attempting a run. That's as simple as that. Absolutely. End of story. Absolutely. Right. So, simple as that. Simple. Yeah. See, I mean, he wasn't attempting a run. No. He was one, he was, no. No, he's wandering about. Any thoughts on spirit of the game? Or does that bring no. you... Um... got nothing to do with the spirit of the game. The problem at Lords and, um, and Headingley, with the two incidents, were a lack of knowledge of the laws of cricket. Be simple. They were, I mean, the, 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 the um, I mean, I saw the one at Lords as well. When at close the player punting, went was raving, raving about. Um, he knows several umpires who, who would have given it out. No, that's not true, because he was he controlled the ball, this is, this sort of, but yeah. he didn't control himself. Yeah. He fell on the ground, and grounded the ball, not out. Okay. Um, I've got one. Go ask this one as well. So it comes with John Shepherd, and we were talking about this again earlier this summer. Are fielders allowed to wear bucket hats while fielding? This is a new trend. You'll see the England players all wearing these bucket hats. There's nothing. There's nothing illegal about wearing a bucket hat. There's not. Nothing whatsoever. Is there anything illegal about any type of hat that you can wear when you're no. fielding? You can go in a sort of a. No. Because a hat can't give you an unfair advantage. Right. So it's, a hat is just protection for your, for your head, that's all it is. Okay, excellent. I, I'm, I'm a bit surprised they don't wear them, because we were talking about it with the wall, the fielding wall around Usman Khawaja at Birmingham, mm. and they were just trying to put him off, and they're sitting there talking. So in, in my mind, I had, if they actually all put bucket hats on as well... You think they're a distraction? ...in front of him. Well, they should really, really put him off. Uh, but anyway, so they, okay. so they could have done that. Well, as long as, long as they don't... Um, as long as the fielders don't walk onto the, of, onto the pitch, they can stand close by. Yes. No problem. With bucket hats. On. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> be quite a good sight there. <laughs> Go on, Victor. OK, well, this doesn't have a reference to the current Ashes series, I don't think. This is from George, who's listening from home in Devon. And he says, growing up playing cricket in Essex, I remember a particular village green on the border with Hertfordshire, which had a road running through it inside the boundary. What I've always wondered is, what would happen if mid-game, on a scorching hot day, a batter hits the ball in the air, just as a convertible car with its roof <laughs> down drives along the road intersecting the ground? The ball lands inside the back seat of the car. The driver, unaware, 
because they are blasting out loud music <laughs> and can't hear what is going on around them, drives off and takes the match ball with oh. them. What should happen? Does it count as a four? Is the ball considered dead as soon as the motorist drives away with it? Yes. Keep up the good work. Yes. <laughs> dead ball. No Immediate. runs at all. Dead ball. Well, we knew you'd get a dead ball in somewhere. Yeah. That's it. So yeah. that's it. No runs. No runs. Through. No runs. Just dead ball. Ball, ball, ball. the ball again. OK. Thank you. Fiona from Canberra. And let's not forget we're broadcasting uh, to Australia as well. Hello, Fiona. I hope you're enjoying your night down there. Um, I'm wondering what happens. And we had a, a case today, actually, almost where this happened. If a ball struck off the ground gets caught in a plastic bag that's floating in the air and it gets the wind carries it over the boundary is that a six or is it a dead ball again we had a case down here this plastic bag was blowing around this morning which maybe is what fiona was thinking about but if it i mean it's it's again uh, maybe an unlikely scenario but but there happens to be a a sort of shopping bag or something in the air the ball goes into it and the momentum <coughs> takes it over the boundary what do you, what are you giving well i mean that is a that is a very difficult because if because of the momentum of the shot the umpire could say that it, it, that the, it was a ball that carried the bag over yes. because of the power of the shot so i would imagine it would be a six runs because i think i thought you'd go dead ball for that no I, I don't. I don't see how you can call dead ball. No. Okay. Excellent. Well, that's a first. He's rejected <laughs> the dead ball <laughs> conclusion. <laughs> um, here, 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 this one. Yeah. Because um, I've often wondered about this. Paul Shawley. Really interesting question. I've been wondering for a while. He says, where the match ball is kept overnight. Is it in a suitable environment relative to the match conditions? I think I know the answer to this, certainly when you and I were together, John. I'm going to say it was just stuck in your umpire's coat pocket yeah, overnight. Was, absolutely. Um, or, or, my, um, or whichever umpire is going to start the following morning, it just be in his pocket. put in his case. It, yeah, yeah. sit there yeah. overnight yeah. in the umpire's room. That's right. I wonder what happens now. Do you think it's under lock and key and all sorts of marks made on it and... I, do, I don't know. I mean, I, I worked with ICC up to 2010, and, and as far as I remember, the umpire is just to put... Stuff because up. the umpire's room is locked up. Yeah. Because of all the security now, the, one, the umpires would just have the ball in... in whichever umpire is going to start the, the following day, he would put the ball in his, in his case and is Get locked. Back and that was it. He's left, and it's left in the umpire's room. That's why cricket's so lovely, isn't it? Is that on, the one, on one hand, everything's so high-tech and, and uh, you know, replays for this and minuscule analysis of that. But the match ball, the most central part of the whole thing, Absolutely. is lobbed in a bag overnight and <laughs> that's, that's the end of it. Mm. Um, I've got one here from Dan in Bath. And he says this. Uh, imagine a situation where the scores are tied and the batting side is nine wickets down. The batter comes down the track. The bowler sees him coming and fires it wide beyond his reach. The, the keeper takes the ball and whips off the bails. The square leg umpire gives the batsman out stumped. Correctly, he says. The standing umpire gives a wide. Also correctly, he says. Obviously, you can be stumped off a wide, yes. but which team would win? The same ball has enabled the batting side to surpass the target, while the bowling side has successfully taken well, ten wickets. The, the the white the white counts. The white counts. The white counts. Okay. The white counts. But the because, because is because the white the white the white, the white happened first. before before the stumping. Okay, so in that instance, the batting side has won. Yep. What have they won by? One wicket? So that That'd split be second between the wide and the bales being... Because he's, he's, the stumping doesn't count. The stumping doesn't count. The stumping doesn't count. The wide come, comes first. That's right. Well, OK. Yes. Wide, wide comes first because the wide is deemed to have started at the moment it left the bowler's hand. OK. OK. A very good piece of bowling, not rewarded. <laughs> 61 for one here, so England 256 behind Australia. If it's tuning in, it's lunchtime, and our old friend John Holder's here going through uh, all these wonderful questions that you've, you've sent us over the last 24 hours or so. Uh, it's always a very popular slot. Uh, here's one. 
uh, from James Fawcett. Hello, James. Um, who was umpiring an under-15s game this year, and something happened he'd never seen before. A bowler bowled, hit the stumps, and one bale came out. Now, this did actually happen. Mm -hmm. The bale then landed and settled on the leg stump, forming a T. <laughs> this did happen. So, OK. <laughs> As the bale didn't settle in both stumps, I believe it was broken. But my fellow umpire, brackets, from the batsman's school, close bracket. <laughs> a sort of dicky bird, really. <laughs> not out. I acquiesced. But I felt that the bowler, it doesn't actually say from my school, close bracket, <laughs> was denied a rightful wicket. Now, I mean, it, I mean, how did it land and forming a tee? But apparently this happened. How do these bales have to be in a stump? The bale must be removed completely from the top of the wicket. So it could go up. Yeah. And land again, yeah. and the stumps have not been broken. That's right. It ball, the bale must be removed completely from the top of the wicket. James, you're wrong. Well. I'm afraid, despite the square leg compartment <laughs> for the batsman's school, he was correct. Well, there you go. Mm. Thank yeah. you, John. Uh, here's a quick one from Ian in North Yorkshire. Uh, given the express pace and bounce from Mark Wood at Headingley, if a short pitch ball travels so far that it doesn't again bounce before crossing the boundary, this is the first bit, is it six byes or four? Six, six runs have got to come off the bat. Okay. So it's only four. So, and likewise, he gives another example. If one of his dismissals had clipped the bales, but it was a no ball, and then crossed the boundary without bouncing, that would be five no balls. Five no balls. Not seven. Five because, no, it's five, five because there's one for no ball automatically, yeah, yeah. plus the four. OK, but, but the non-bouncing ball that passes over the keeper and just keeps going and going, which is just about possible when they're bowling at Mark Wood's space. It's still yeah. four. It's still four. Six runs can only come off the bat. OK. OK. Yeah. It's apparently Graham McKenzie. I mean, Ray Lingworth always tells a story. Oh, right. In, in a Sunday league game as well, really? of a short run, apparently at Lord's. He pinged one straight into the sight screen. I mean, it's a it's a long way to go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's a strong man. Was a very, but he was. He had a really strong action. Didn't he? Gosh. Huge shoulders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gavin McCartney, good morning, he writes. My question occurred in a friendly game a couple of seasons ago. The bowler bowled the ball and the, bats, the batsman tucked into the leg side and took off for a run. Our fielder at square leg went like lightning, collected the ball and threw it towards the stumps at the wicketkeeper's end. While this was happening, the wicketkeeper raced up to the stumps and knocked one of the bales off. The throw from the fielder was a direct hit, knocking the other bale off with the batsman short of his ground. The square leg umpire gave the batsman <coughs> run out. Is this correct? I was captain on the day and decided not to withdraw the appeal. <laughs> so, regards. so the was bale one is, bale left on. One bale we left on. That was knocked off by the direct throw, but yeah. the other one was already on the ground. That's a good question. Ooh, ooh. One bale, rem one bale rem remains. You, you break. If you knock it off, you're out. Is it? So if he, if he, the wicket's not broken with one bale on the ground. The wicket is broken. So then, no. If one, if the wicket is broken, well, then you've got to pull, pull a stump out. A stump out of the ground, but make sure that the ball is in the hand yes. that you grab the stump with. So on this so, on this occasion, with one bale left, yeah, does that? So it, I, I still haven't quite worked out whether he's in or out. This he, he's out. He's no, he's no, you've, so he's not out because the, you, wicket, the only way he would have been out. Broken. Is if 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 he'd struck one of the wicket, one of the stumps that remain out of the ground, so you got to you got, got to you got to then out. strike pull it either strike it out with a ball, which you could if you hit it hard enough, or pull it out. All right, so one bale only left on the stumps. Yeah, 
constitutes the wicket the having been broken. broken. The wicket is broken. And yeah. so you've got to take the alternative, more complicated route of grabbing the ball That's and right. wrenching the stump. Or, thro or throwing it out. Yes. Oh, right. Throwing it, yeah. So he was not out. He was not out. Not out. I wonder yeah. if there was a bit of a rumpus, Gavin. You do say here, I decided not to withdraw the appeal, which suggests that <laughs> that's what he was given out. <laughs> Might not have been very happy about it. But anyway, that could do for another day. Thank you for writing. OK, I've got one from Graham Peters. Uh, from Middlesex and a lot seems to be happening here the bowler <laughs> with his bowling hand accidentally breaks the bowler's end wicket mm -hmm. in his delivery stride mm -hmm. I told you there's a lot happening mm -hmm. at the same time you notice that the non-striker has left his crease you call ball and signal no ball I presume because these broken stumps, is yep. that right? The striker hits the ball for six. Hang on, he says, now you signal no ball and a six followed by a free hit. He must be playing some sort of one-day game, this. At this point, however, forget that last bit, I think it complicates mm. it, the fielder appeals for a run-out. What do you do? <laughs> that is no ball followed by dead ball. Ah, that solves it. So that ball, once it he's is, broken the stumps... It's the, the ball is then umpire calls the no end ball. That's the end of yeah. that delivery, as so it were. So you were. call no ball and then dead ball. So the fact that he's in it for six is irrelevant. Absolutely. Because right. once he calls no dead ball, nothing else can happen. And life is much simpler after you call dead ball. Yeah, it is. So that's so the six and everything that happens after that don't matter. It doesn't matter. What about the notion, though? What about the run out? You know, the, you it's know. It's called dead ball, so dead bo but, but ball is dead. So there's no run out. Yeah, but he, the bowler, wittingly or not, by mistake or accident or not, has broken the stumps with the ball in his hand as he tries to deliver. Like a sort of what we used to call a man cab, but is you know a run out of the non-striker. He didn't mean to do it, but nonetheless he has done it. But the non-striking batsman is out of his ground. Can he be run out? You have to appeal for one of those. You have to appeal. Okay, let's say you appeal. Once he once he has broken the wicket. Yeah, yeah. The ball, the ump, it's no ball. Immediately dead ball. Nothing can happen. For breaking the wicket in your delivery stride, yep. but yep. what's the, but then there's a grey area between when you try and run someone out who's the non-striker. You but, are kind of in your delivery stride, aren't you? No, but that that is different from trying to delivering the ball. Those, okay. That's totally different from delivering okay. the ball. This I think is known as the Steve Finn rule, isn't it? Yes, yeah. okay, Steve Finn. Up to Graham Smith and Steve Finn. You, and, you and, that's right. The bales with your hand and nothing would happen. And Graham and it, Smith argued it, absurdly yeah, that yeah. was putting him off. It, 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 that was a complete farce. What happened? It was a farce, yes. What happened was a farce. Yes. There was, it should never have been a no ball. No. And it should never have been dead ball. It's but a dead nonsense. ball to start with, which would be more dead ball, dead ball was rubbish. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then to change the law yeah. and for it to become law, it was nonsense. I'm with you on there, John. There was no it distraction was, whatsoever. Graham Smith just getting into well, it. It was a deliberate ploy yeah. to put Steve Finn Correct. off his stride. Absolutely, John. Well said. Oh, Andy right. Kirby in Carmarthenshire. I once bowled someone out in a match in Swansea, but the ball went through the stumps. <laughs> it hadn't been set up properly. <laughs> the umpire gave the bats were not out, much to my chagrin, and the next ball got hit for four. <laughs> was he right? Well, well, absolutely, because what the umpire should have done is having having realised that the stumps were too wide, should have stopped the game and set the stumps correctly. Yes. Do you, do, would you have checked yourself before the match started with a ball and just made sure yeah. Boom, yeah, go, yeah, go yeah, through? Yeah. Because once you, once you put the, 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 the bills on, the bills should fit yes. snugly to, and you realise that the stumps are properly set, set up. Bit of a giveaway, the bales don't fit. Properly. Absolutely. If the, <laughs> if the bales are, you've got great big gaps, you know the wicket the wicket is not set properly. Yeah. So he's not out? Not, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Gone straight through? Absolutely. The umpire should have egg, would have egg, egg on his face, really, because... Yeah. Um, yeah, I've, go. I've got one here from Julian Thomas, but actually, to be fair, it's not one for an umpire explicitly. But it relates to this game a bit. In the modern age with high accuracy weather forecasts, we hope, when we know that rain will curtail a test match, why don't we play on while the light is good on the days with no rain? 
Yesterday seemed like a prime example. We could have played on to ensure we get as many scheduled overs as possible. I'm not suggesting, he says, we change the scheduled number of overs in the match, just that we should do more to preempt what will follow. Interested to hear what the team thinks. That it's is not, a, it's not, I know you can't say, you know, know, that, it's not, it's not, it's beyond your pay, pay share scale. <laughs> that, that's, a, that's a decision for the ICC. Yeah, but what do you think? Is I, it worth? I, I don't agree with that. Okay. I don't. I mean, because there's also a, 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 a situation, how long are you going to play for? I mean, the players have been off running around, let us say it's a boiling hot so, yeah, yeah. You can do the players have been running around bowling. You need a rest as well, so. Okay. I'd, uh, I've got to there's a limit. Comes. There's a limit to the amount of extra time you can play anyhow. Right, here's our, here's our crazy one. <laughs> George Spooner uh, in Cambridge. Hello, George. Uh, here, good luck with this one, John. A batsman hits a ball towards the boundary. The pitch is near a farm. A bull walks onto the field and the ball gets speared onto one of the bull's horns. <laughs> the fielder was nowhere near the ball, but he goes up to the bull, removes the ball and claims the catch. Is he out? He's out of his mind, but I don't know if he's actually out on it. He's very brave. <laughs> as soon as the ball came onto the field of play, yep. dead ball. Dead ball. The game stops. And run for your lives. Absolutely. No, you, 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 you wouldn't allow that to happen. No. It's the same as a dog running onto the field of play and grabbing the ball I suppose and running around. I mean, I that's, that's a farce. I suppose when a bull or a dog intervenes that way, it is up to the umpire, really, in the end, to retrieve the ball, is it not? <laughs> but the, the, my question is, what is that ball made of that it gets speared on the, on the bull's horns? Yes. I mean, that, well, the the horn been, punches it. Well, it's sharpening of? those horns as well. That's, yeah. a, bit, that's a bit of a worry. <laughs> Have you ever seen? I mean, there must be cases out out there in, in village cricket, club cricket, Sunday cricket, where a dog does come on and run off of the ball. I'm I mean, sure. it, it must happen quite a lot, doesn't it? Yeah, Probably. Yeah. It's I mean, I, I have no idea, but I would imagine. Yeah. Then and it's that is dead ball, and you go and try and get hold of it. Absolutely. Yeah, and you yeah. clean it up. The problem, the problem is, do the umpires know the laws? <laughs> well, exactly. <laughs> and quite often they don't. Right. Uh, here's an interesting one. Again, it's not. Well, it is kind of your territory. From Ben Pester in North London. Um, how much sledging is too much sledging? Does the umpire have a duty to intervene when it turns into more than good-natured chaff? What are the options? Can he be dismissed or removed from the field for excessive sledging? It's, it's interesting. You can, you can now if, if, if the umpires, have, the laws have changed a few years ago and, and you can actually send a player off to Sinbin now for bad behaviour. What oh, you right. deem as bad behaviour, yeah. Absolutely. How, how, long, how long for? At your, at your own discretion you send him off? For... You, can, you can send him off for the rest of the innings if, it's, yeah. if the transgression is serious enough. There, I think there, there are four levels of... of um, Offences, and the most serious offence, you can remove the bowler from the field of play for the rest of the innings. So that didn't apply when you were umpire. No, that's there must have been the odd instance when you were standing where you thought the sledging is out of control. No, no, or not, no. Not really. As soon as soon as you see that sort of thing start, start, you either speak to the offender or to the fielding ca or the offender's captain and right. say, "Skipper, I am not prepared to put up this sort of behaviour." Right, and then it's up to the captain, probably, or the the, the batsman. Yeah. Usually the cat, the fielding captain. Fielding captain. And if you would depend players. on the fielding captain to take responsibility. That's right. For the behaviour of his team. Last one as the fielders come out from Alfred Simons. During a game, our bowler was taken away by police for questioning. <laughs> Halfway through, is over. Should they have waited till the end of the over? That's one fielder finish on. <laughs> Thank you for all your suggestions uh, of, of the various scale uh, of, of experiences that actually happened. And I'm particularly interested by that Muhammad Ali one. Yeah, yeah. And the fact that the, 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 the no... number 11 can start his innings, disappear to the gents and not come back. That is not covered in the laws of They can't get him back out again. That, I mean, that seems remarkable. OK, thank you, John. Lovely to see you. It really is. Come and see us again next year for sure.